everybody, and welcome to a new, fresh episode of Osprey Observer TV. Joining me, as always, Editor-in-Chief of the Osprey Observer, Marie Gilmore, and, as always, amazing guests that are doing incredible things in our community, positive things uh, to uh, help us in, in these times of crisis and, uh, and also to help build this community into a great place to live, work, and play. And so, uh, as always, Marie lines up amazing guests. And so, who do we have today? So I'm so very happy to introduce a dear friend of mine. I've got to know he, he and his wife, Charmaine, over the last few years as they established an incredible church in our community called Love First Christian Center. It's my pleasure to introduce my friend, Dr. Jomo Cousins. Thank you so much for being here, Pastor Jomo. It's an honor. It's an honor, Marie. We go, <clears throat> we go way back, uh, um, over a decade, and uh, always a pleasure to join you. We do. We absolutely do. And I'm so proud and impressed with everything your church is doing. You have a building under construction. You have taken a global pandemic and turned it into a true opportunity. You do every morning a live video feed. I put it on and I'm inspired by it when I'm getting my hair ready or my makeup on in the morning. And you're so consistent. You've also started a few things. You started feeding people during the pandemic just in any way they need. You also took your church on the road and did something really special at St. Joseph's Baptist Hospital, and I want to hear a little bit about that. It's been amazing. Uh, one of the one of my team members uh, decided to create an idea called a pop up church. With so many people being sick and shut in and could not get to church, uh, they decided to bring the church to them. So for since the pandemic started, uh, people will uh, request to be on the pop up church list. And, uh, you know, we set a weekend and we'll try to do four to five different locations where a, uh, a group of uh, choir members, a minister will go to a particular home. Uh, we don't go in the house. We're right in front of the house. Uh, we have speakers and uh, we usually sing two songs and give a short message. And what's been incredible is some moments neighbors will come outside. And it'll be like a congregation outside. And then they'll ask, you know, where is this church at? And, you know, they, they, they often come back. But what we did recently is uh, St. Joe's on Big Ben. Uh, we did, uh, a, they asked me to do a prayer day there last year. And uh, one of the, the people there called me again and said, listen, uh, can you come out? Uh, a lot of our doctors and nurses and a lot of medical staff are just really discouraged right now. And I said, absolutely. So we turned the prayer day into a pop-up church opportunity. And uh, so we went, our, our choir did, the choir was supposed to do one song and then pray. So I did one song and prayed. And after the song, they wanted more songs. And it went from one song to two songs, so two songs to three songs. And uh, we also had a, a, a mobile digital truck come up telling, uh, basically having a picture saying, we appreciate you, we love you, thank you for your service. And it was a great opportunity just to celebrate those who don't get a lot of praise but catch a lot of flack, those who are, uh, who are making the ultimate sacrifice of putting themselves in danger to help uh, others. So it was just a great opportunity to share the love uh, of Christ and to be a blessing. Well, well, what I love about you, that story is, and, and what you're doing in that regard is that it's almost, uh, you know, church in its most original sense, you know, that it wasn't a physical place. Um, it was wherever, you know, wherever God was, wherever people got together to worship and, uh, and, and, uh, and congregate. And, uh, and I think, you know, sometimes we, we forget that, right. Uh, especially in these times where we weren't allowed for some time to go to a physical location. Uh, we forget that our home can be a church. Um, and, and, and for you to bring that experience to people's homes and to a place like St. Joe's. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. And I, I can imagine, you know, the response, uh, I mean, how many demands or, or requests are you getting, you know, for, for we, we, we get a lot of demands. Obviously you can't be everywhere at the same time. And, uh, we're trying to be, you know, cognizant of everything. Uh, not everyone receives us. You know, we've been in neighborhoods where people said, I'm calling the police on you. Leave right now. So, you know, it's a battle because, as you know, we're in a very polarized world that, you know, you may not even get to get the song out or the prayer out before someone's telling you to move and shooing you. So it's it's a positive and a negative, because when you start 
uh, sharing the gospel or singing, even if you're singing about God, not everyone is going to receive you well. So it, it has been interesting. Well, I would say 95% of the time, it's a beautiful experience and uh, people are engaged. And like you said, this is, the Bible clearly states where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he, he is in the midst. Another translation is where two or three are gathered, church begins. So church was never about a building. Church was about like-minded people coming together to fellowship and to praise, worship, and talk about God. That, that's the gist of it. And yep. I think that in this season, God is really uh, breaking down some of these uh, facades and really bringing us back to the original intent. For those who are not familiar with Love First, Pastor Jomo, walk me through how you describe Love First Christian Center to someone who's not been to your location. It's amazing. We, I, I, was, uh, I was getting interviewed last week and a person asked me, you know, first off, you know, where did you come up with the idea of Love First? And I said, our, our slogan is pretty simple. Love God, love people, love first. That's it. Love God, love people, which is Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. You know, love the Lord your God, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. All we really want to do is perpetuate love. And so we started 12 and a half plus years ago uh, with me running from God and saying, I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough. And this is the last person that you want to use. But uh, after I get, I got over my apprehension we started and you know has become a, f- a phenomenon of just trying to show the love of God in a real applicable way simple that we're all flawed and I said the bottom line is listen we'll never be sinless the goal is to sin less and that's it you know none of us are perfect we're all under construction and that was my greatest apprehension of being a pastor was that I would never measure up and I'd never qualify and come to find out I don't. That's the reality. And once you really understand that we are flawed, going after a perfect God and that he understands our flaws and our goal at love first is to love you through. Uh, Dr. King would say uh, love is the only force that can turn an enemy into a friend. And I think right now in the space we're in, we need a lot more love because obviously fire and fire is not putting out the fire. Uh, at some point, uh, we have to understand who, my na- who our neighbor is. And I said, that's the rub right now. We say love God, love people, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. The question is, we have not qualified who our neighbor is. And when you really dig into it, scripturally, who your neighbor is, uh, we don't like that answer. Uh, because the neighbor is the one you don't love and the neighbor is the one that may make you feel uncomfortable. But that is what we are supposed to do when we love people. And you can't love God and hate people. I mean, it's kind of an oxymoron. I mean, <laughs> if you, yeah. God, you know, people are made in God's image. So if you, if you love God, you should love people. Uh, we're obviously, again, as I mentioned, in times of crisis with the uh, coronavirus and uh, and how that has affected our entire lives. Uh, everybody has been affected by this directly and indirectly. Um, and uh, people are doing a lot of soul searching, whether it's making decisions about uh, the vaccine, whether it's making decisions about where they live, about where they work. Uh, there, there are major changes taking place in people's lives. How have you been guiding some of those individuals in, into making the decisions uh, that, again, are going to affect them for the rest of their lives based on uh, these, these, these times of crisis that we're going through? In this season, I, I'm actually in a series right now called Relationships. Uh, I have done more funerals than sermons. And the one thing about doing funerals, I tell people, if nothing else, you leave a funeral appreciative of what you have. You're actually a better person the day after a funeral. You're actually nicer because you realize that the clock is ticking and you could be next. I said, so right now we're in a season of space and time where you really need to figure out what relationships are important. You need to tell people how you really feel about them because you just don't know. You have to make wise decisions in reference to vaccine or no vaccine. I'm a cancer survivor. I had stage three colon cancer. I went to my oncologist and he said, Jomo, get the vaccine. Okay, done. Get the vaccine. It's amazing to me how we could listen to doctors 
you know, a couple of years ago, and now we can't listen to doctors. The same doctor is the same person, but all of a sudden now you have a new revelation that you never had before. You know, I'm mean, just, it's a, you know, uh, I took chemotherapy. Okay, I put poison in me. Okay, to get rid of the cancer, yeah. and I was cool with that. But I can't take a vaccine. I mean, it, it's amazing to me the level of uh, madness that we are allowing in this season. Just, but you know, but I under, you know, I told our church. I said, listen. Initially, when when it came out, uh, I told them. I said, I'm apprehensive. Uh, I said, being a cancer survivor with a, a compromised immune system, I had some pause. My daughter has an autoimmune disease. We had some pause. But after getting the research and information, now we're all vaccinated and we're all good. Not saying it's for everybody, but I'm just saying, based on the information we had, that was the best decision. Uh, my wife, initially, when I found out I had cancer years ago, I told her I'm not getting chemo. Well, she looked at me and says, Jomo, please get chemo. Now, of course, I didn't want to, but guess what I did? I took chemo. And <laughs> by God's grace, I'm on the other side of it. But my point to you is we have to use wisdom. And that's the challenge I have in the season we're in. People, uh, they have everyone else's opinion, but they have not done the individual research for themselves to not be a parent, but to actually ask questions from people who you trust, who have understanding, and just not take everyone else's advice that may not be beneficial to you. So obviously the vaccine's a hot button topic. Uh, I told the church what I have done. And I said, listen, uh, based on information you have, I think it's a good idea. Now you don't have to do anything. I mean, and that, I said, that's a challenge we have right now. Everyone has an opinion and it's dangerous. Very much so. Pastor Jomar, you are a pastor, a father, a husband, a published author, a former NFL player, a cancer survivor. You do a daily prayer message for your people. You get together with your wife, Charmaine, and you do inspirational talks about marriage, just real, real situations. I smile and giggle and laugh every time, but there's such a strong message behind what you say. And it's not always comfortable. Sometimes it's a little like, oh, are they really going to talk about that? And you do. You talk about it. You get down to the nitty gritty and you communicate with people in so many ways. In addition, you write a monthly column for us in the Christian Voice based on your book that you published. And you're out there in the community in so many different ways to give hope, to give a message. I appreciate that you were apprehensive at first about something like the vaccine. You researched, you studied, and you asked the medical professionals. I have to agree with you. We've listened to them all these years, our pediatrician for our children. We've followed all of their best advice. And then you're right. We questioned. Now we're like, really? Are you sure? Because Facebook says, you know, we're, we're willing to go with social media uh, research instead of our trusted, you know, medical professionals. So we just need to get the message out there to the community. We need to continue to have grace. We started with grace when we had our shutdown. We were all very understanding and peaceful. And now we want to know why our you know, a coffee takes 30 seconds longer at the drive through because there's less staff. We've lost our patience and our grace with people. And I'm just appreciative for those who are out working, for those who are continuing to serve the public and making their own choice, whether they mask or not mask. I leave that to every single person's judgment. I want to do the best for my family that I can with the information that I have. And I want everyone to do the same for theirs. So I really appreciate you being with us today. I know you're going to have much more going on at Love First Christian Center that we're going to want to share with people. We will turn this into a podcast as well. So let us know how people can stay in touch with you, Pastor Jomo, with Love First, and then just give us, you know, your website and tell us your address in case somebody wants to come visit you and see for themselves what it's all about. The address, the church address is 12847 Bond Riverview Road, Riverview, Florida. 12847 Bond Riverview Road, Riverview, Florida. We have service time 7.45 and 9.45. Uh, if you want to meet me on Facebook in the morning time for prayer uh, at 6.30 a.m., uh, you can either do the Pastor Jomo, one word, Pastor Jomo on Facebook, or the Love First Christian Center uh, Facebook or YouTube. So we have the YouTube and Facebook going on. Um, but those are the ways to reach me. My personal website is jomocousins.com, jomocousins.com. The church website is LF cc.tv lfcc.tv and like uh, marie says every morning i get up monday through friday 6 30 and i spend time praying and meditating and everything is simple it's not deep and it's not spooky it's just the word 
And after that, I do a 15 minute teaching right now. The book we're working through is watch your mouth. What I talk about is watching your mouth, because I think right now in the world we live in, if people could just be more careful with their words, we'd be in a much better place. Thank you so much, Pastor Jomo. We'll stay in touch. And I appreciate everything you're doing for our community. Thank you so much. What an honor. Thank you. God bless you. And Marie, you are a blessing. Love you to life. My brother, God bless you. See y'all when I see y'all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you again to Pastor Jomo Cousins. Incredibly inspirational uh, and certainly makes me wish that I could go to one of these kind of on-site gatherings that he put together. The Pop-Up Church. Uh, The Pop-Up Church sounds amazing. Uh, And uh, and, and so keep an eye out uh, and keep your ears open for uh, those in the community, make sure to connect with him online uh, because he's doing amazing work. In fact, he's on the cover of Christian Voice. I know this was completely not planned. Very coincidental. <laughs> but on this September edition of the Christian Voice, we actually had highlighted Love First Christian Center and some of their Life University classes that they do. Wow. They're all about education and outreach to the community. Yeah. So this classes they have is Grief Share. Okay. So important, sure. especially now with what everybody's going through. We've all Ooh. suffered some sort of a loss. Definitely through the global pandemic, family, friend, so you know, acquaintance, grief share is a really wonderful program. Parenting, there's a parenting program, yeah. and then there's a singles parenting program. So just a few of the important classes they've got offered through Love First Christian Center. So just an incredible organization in our community. Thank you again for all of you do, your pop-up churches, your morning prayer and inspiration. We're just I think we'll be keeping up with Pastor Jomo in the future with some more great things. Well, absolutely. And it's one of these things where much like therapy, you know, right now, um, it's, it, you, it, we, we got to normalize the fact that it's okay to seek help and to seek, uh, advice and to seek, uh, you know, comfort, um, and regardless of, again, what you're going through, because, uh, we are going through so much right now, uh, be it professionally, be it in our family, be it, uh, in, in our relationships. Um, right. and, uh, and, and like you said, directly or indirectly, especially right now, you know, people are losing loved ones and friends and acquaintances. And, uh, oftentimes again, you start to reassess your life. You start to reassess what's important to you. Um, and sometimes you need somebody to guide you through that process. That's right. There's yeah. programs and activities out there and things in our community resources we can reach out to. So we'll have that information on our website ospreyobserver.com and we'll be happy to share it cool in addition to pastor cousins uh being on the the front top fold uh what else do we have going on in the community so we love this trend we have in our community we have community gardens what yes people get 10 by 10 you always hear about these but i i've never seen one yes and they've got community community gardens this one is bay life churches seeds of faith community garden and people can sort of pledge a space plant the space, nurture the space, grow Mm -hmm. their fruits and vegetables in the space and harvest. Cool. And if there's any surplus, they donate it to the food bank. So it's just a win-win all the way around. Well, and again, especially nowadays where people are looking for a new hobby, some activities to keep busy, uh, you know, something that, again, maybe if you're being very cautious about being around a lot of people, well, here's an activity that you can do uh, either on your own or with your family. Uh, and, and and nothing better than not only providing yourself with fresh fruits and vegetables, because we know, uh, unfortunately, what ends up in most of our supermarkets is, is processed and, you know, and, and we don't know, you know, a lot of what goes into to those things. Um, but here, again, like you just said, the excess goes into uh, the food pantry, you know, here in our community that, again, uh, in this time of need, you know, is incredibly important. And uh, we've talked to a number of organizations that do that uh, yep. and, and help feed those in need. And so this is another great way to, to impact those who uh, may be struggling right now, so. Uh, For more information on the Christian Voice and, of course, things happening in our community, you can look up the ChristianVoice.com. Is that the? It's all available on Osprey Observer. Right. So OspreyObserver.com is uh, actually the website you need to be visiting. Um, And uh, and thank you so much to the team at the Osprey Observer, Editor-in-Chief Marie Gilmore. I'm Johnny Torres, the host of Osprey Observer TV. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.